Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion in which we're going to be looking at creating this advanced light trails effect. So obviously this is a particle based effect and to create a particle system we obviously need a particle. Now the particle is the secret to why this looks rather nice. Um, so I was hoping I could tease it out a little bit more and, and show it to you a bit later on but of course we really need to start there and um, that's going to blow the whole secret but hopefully there's some other interesting stuff in this tutorial that will keep you watching. Anyway let's set up our particle. Let's come over to our project settings. I want a project that is 200 by 200. And for the rest I've got a frame rate of 24 and a duration of 15. Okay, so I'm going to come to generators and here is the secret. It's the generator called membrane. I'm going to bring that in and what I'm simply going to do is I'm going to step along till I find a frame that I like the look of. I quite like the look of that frame and then I'm going to come to share save current frame. We're going to save it out as a PNG with alpha and we're going to save it to our assets folder and call it membrane A. Now because we've got two particle systems I think it'd be fun to have a different particle for each so in order to do that let's just skip along till we see another frame we think is interesting. Obviously we could use the, the membrane controls maybe let's do that. It's just about getting something that's a bit different. Let's go for that for example. So let's save it out, save current frame, again PNG, and let's save it as membrane B. And now we can get to work. So now we're in a new project and let's just check out what we're going to do with that. Let's go for 1920, 1080. I've made the frame rate 50 frames a second, but actually that's just for the purpose of this tutorial to give us enough uh, playback speed. I'd recommend you go to 60 uh, for the smoothest results. And then uh, let's set the duration to 15 seconds. And then let's come over and import our two assets. So we're going to make an emitter out of the first one. So object make particles. That's membrane A I've got there. I'm going to drag that out to a new group. So let's first of all turn on the 3D switch. Let's turn off face camera. I want to come to the first frame and keyframe the birth rate. Set that to zero step forward one frame and set that to 400. Again, the more of these particles you have, the better this effect is going to be. I'm sticking with 400 for the purpose of the tutorial. So let's have a life of three. We don't want any speed and let's have some spin. So I'm going to go for something like negative 65. Then let's open up the opacity of a life gradient here and let's click on the bar there and here, drag that one to the end. This one, let's have it at around, I don't know, 5%. And then the first opacity down to zero, last opacity down to zero. So the effect of that is they're going to fade in quickly, fade off slowly. So we've got this nice fading tail. And we'll come back in later on and, and sort out the color. Let's also remember to turn on additive blend. So to get the movement, we're going to apply oscillate behaviors to the X, Y, and Z positions. Right click on the X, add parameter behavior oscillate. Let's do the same thing for the Y and the Z. So the Z, I want a lot of movement, I think. So I'm going to go for 1500 on Z and set that speed to, I don't know, 25. So Y, let's have say, 480 and X let's have 720 for the amplitude and again let's just set these speeds so they're different so 19 for the Y and let's say 13 for the X. I'm just going to turn off the Z like so and just move it back by a thousand pixels and turn back on the oscillate just so it stays a little bit more within frame. So I think you can see now we've got this really rather nice sort of light effect because we're using that really rather funky particle. 
And uh, if we were to swap out the particle and use membrane B, you'd see we'd have a very slightly different look to it. So let's do some more work on this. Let's start with the color, I think. So let's come down to the color mode and pick over life. So really it's up to you what colors you have. I think I'm going to have white for that first color. So add another tab here, make that a little bit bluish. And then this last one here, let's make that something like that. And let's add another one here, I think, and make that even redder, less green, something like that. Last one, let's make that very red. So you see those colors are really sort of adding a lot to the, to the effect. So let's also add a behaviors particles scale over life. I don't want the default value. I'm going to come down to custom here and it gives us this graph that we can manipulate. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and click here, roughly at 40%. Well, let's enter exactly 40%. And we'll set that scale there to 100. And then let's also set that initial keyframe there. It's over life value is zero. Let's set its custom scale to something like 10. Maybe that's too small. Let's go for 20. And then let's also just select that key po that keyframe there and make it ease in. So you can see we're, we're changing the profile over time. If I turn that on and off, we're having a much finer start to it. And it gradually spreads out as it grows. Let's also add a background. So let's come to generators and bring in a gradient down here at the bottom, come to Gradient controls, set it to radial. I think I'm going to go for that. Let's just move up the Y start to somewhere around there. And let's bring down the Y end. So we've got a larger area there. And let's set this to, I don't know, something like that. There we go. Just doing this kind of quickly as a as a example. Now I'm going to have to apologize for my screen recording software, which is ScreenFlow here. It's making a horrible mess of the uh, of the gradient and it, it's, it's going to spoil your enjoyment of this tutorial, but um, unfortunately there's not, not a lot I can do about it. Um, so apologies for that. Okay, so also now we want to make sure that we set this emitter to, actually I'm going to make do it to the group, just, just make all life easier. I'm going to set that to add so it's now going to blend nicely with the with the background. And now let's bring in a lens flare to act as the sort of leading edge of our, our effect. So library generators lens flare, bring that in to make a new group at the top there. I'm going to set this width and height to be something like 4000 just to make sure uh, it stays covering the area that we want. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to link its position, global position, add parameter behavior link to the emitter. And so now that's nicely following along with the starting point of the effect. And let's just tweak that uh, lens flare a little bit. Let's reduce the size down to 20, but bring the intensity up to three and the fall off to five. I think what I might also do, I think, I think my fade here is a little bit harsh on the start of the emitter. So let's come over here. And so we've got that location there. I think I'm just going to literally set it to one. And it's going to follow along a little bit more from the... There you go. I think that's, that's looking a little bit better. You can see now the lens flow is actually shrinking and growing as, as the emitter goes away from us and, and comes towards us. So at the moment, we've got a very smooth path for, for the emitter, and that's, that's kind of nice in itself. But what if we wanted a little bit more interest to it? So let's come over and select it and add parameter behavior a wriggle. And I'm going to add this to properties transform position Y. So it kind of wriggles up and down a bit. I'm going to set the apply mode to add and subtract and the amount to 200. And you can already see how that path is really starting to, to get a lot more sort of complex. 
the noisiness is probably too much. So let's bring that down to 0.2. Now we've got a sort of more sort of fluid effect. Perhaps bring down the frequency 0.75, bring up the noisiness. Don't know really, it's entirely up to you what you want. I think, you know, a bit of, bit of wriggle creates these nice sort of kinks in it that, that, that make the, the pattern much more complex. Actually, maybe just go back up with the, the frequency. Let's go back up to one. I think I quite like that. So now what we can do is literally just uh, duplicate that emitter. So right click, duplicate, use membrane B for the first one. Let's use membrane A for the second one. So let's just, just change up some of these numbers here. And probably the best thing to do is just literally mess with the speeds. So let's go for 11 there for the X, 21 for the Y, and say 27 for the Z. And just to mix things up a bit, let's click on the random seed for the wriggle. So we've got a, a different wriggle behavior. And then also we need to duplicate the lens flare, right click duplicate, and add to the link behavior the second emitter. So now we've got a scene that looks something like this. So there are lots of ways in which we can customize this a bit further. Let's turn off the second emitter and concentrate on the first one. Now we had, for the first one we were using membrane B. I'm gonna turn off that second lens flare as well, that's distracting. So what we can do is apply filters to the particle itself in order to change the look of this. So the filter I'm going to choose is one of my favorites, which is filters, stylize, crystallize. We don't want any speed here, but I think you'll notice immediately the effect of that is to create these really nice lines, which makes it even more fluid. And we can adjust the size of those lines using the crystallized size. So for example, we go for four and make that even, even finer if we chose to. That's really quite elegant. So one of the things I want to point out is that this effect largely depends on something we did with the emitter that I didn't explain, and that's the spin value. If I turn off that spin value, you'll notice that it's much more boring. But if we increase it, let's go for negative 120 or something, you'll see we get much more folding in of the, the effect on itself. And that's, that's where it gets really interesting. So really, we should have a different spin value for both these emitters. So I'm going to set the other one to 120. And let, let's now turn that other one back on again. And I want to, let's turn on the lens flare as well. I want to draw your attention to, to one other thing, which is that as you can see here, it folds over the other one like a ribbon. And you may or may not like that. If you don't like it, you can switch the blend mode to something like add or even linear dodge. And you can see that they intersect like light. Let's switch back to normal there. You can see it sort of, it just goes right over the top. So probably add is going to be a better bet to make it look more like light. So talking of light, let's actually add some light. Uh, there's one thing I want to do first of all though, and that's to come into both the emitters and reduce this Z amplitude down to a thousand. Do the same for emitter A. I just don't want those going quite so well back in the scene. So let's add a light, so object light, let's not switch to 3D because what we want to do is we want to come down and simply switch this back group here, the group with the gradient in it, we want to switch that one to 3D and that's only the only one that's going to be affected by the light. So let's attach that light to emitter A, so come to its position, global position, add parameter behavior, link and we'll select emitter A. And we'll duplicate that light, right click duplicate, come back to its link behavior and we'll select emitter B. Now what we need to do here is we need to move the background back so that the illumination works correctly. So I'm going to select that gradient. I'm going to move it back negative 2500 on Z and then 
I need to compensate with the scale and set that to 210. And now I think you can see that the lights are illuminating the background as they get closer to it. We just need to make a slight adjustment to both of them and that's to set the fall off down to one so that they have a better chance of actually hitting the background. And another thing we can do to just give it a little bit more sense of depth and atmosphere is to bring in some extra assets. So I'm going to make a new group and into this group I'm going to import these two dust layer elements. So I'm going to set their blend mode to add and they're not quite long enough for the project so I'm going to come down to timing and set that speed to 60% and the blending for frame blending to blending. Now at the moment we can't see them because they are in the wrong position in relation to the overall scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that group and I'm going to move it back again on Z, so negative 2500, and I'm going to set their scale to 210. And now you can see that they are getting illuminated by the lights as the lights go back in the scene. So just that extra atmospheric effect just gives us a sense of, of, of depth, and that dust is just a, a useful way of achieving that. Now there is a very slight issue, and it's probably not even visible, but it might be visible once you render this, uh, and that's with the lens flares not being quite large enough uh, in relation to the movement that we've adopted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them both and set their width to 6000, and that should take care of any edges that we might otherwise see. Another thing is, if we like that crystallize effect, we should really copy it onto the other one. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it onto Membrane A, and now we've got it on both. So select that, turn it off. I think it's probably a more interesting effect with it on. And what you could also do, if you, you like it but you don't like it that much, you could just dial it back with its mix value. So that's zero, that's 50%. That's 100%, so maybe sort of 75% just gives it a little bit more subtlety. Do that on both. So there was one other tweak that I wanted to make, and that was to come into both of these emitters. And I've reduced the speed of the oscillate behaviors by around 20% for each value on, on both emitters. And I think just that will just give us a little bit more visual interest and one of the other things we could do with come to emitter B and we could change the phase of the oscillate. So it's not, it's not so much in sync with the other one. So that's a value of three. That's, that's three seconds, the, the phase. So we don't necessarily need to do it to all the values. It might be enough just to have um, a, a differential on the Z. So now it's looking like that. I don't think I think it's not too bad. They look they look they look sufficiently independent. And of course, one final thing, because after all this is meant to be a light effect, is you might want to take that group containing the emitters and just add a basic glow to it. The, probably the default is going to be enough. It's not a it's not a terribly good filter. This one, uh, as you know, I'm not a fan of it at all. But but probably just a little hint of it here is 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 what we need. So there you go. I mean, obviously lots of ways in which you can customize this to taste. I hope this has given you a good starter. And thanks very much indeed for watching. And of course, a big thank you to all of my Patreon backers.